How's it going everyone? Rawreen here and tonight we are going to be replacing a low fuel pressure sensor on a 2013 Ford Escape 1.6 liter SE EcoBoost. Um, this is to fix check engine light code P0087 which is fuel rail pressure is low. So typical symptoms that you'll see is when the engine is warmed up driving at low speeds or you're sitting in idle the engine might stall it might hesitate. Um, when you press the gas it might feel like the car is bucking forwards, and weak acceleration, low fuel economy, and of course that check engine light that shows up. I have already tried replacing other parts, including the high pressure fuel sensor, but it has not fixed it yet. So I did some more research. This seems to be the culprit. There are other things that you can check as well, like your fuel pump, your fuel filter, any fuel lines, as well as the electrical connections, but chances are those are in good shape because this has been known to be an issue with so I'm going to show you how to replace this. Let's get started. All right, so for this video, you are obviously going to need a new low pressure fuel sensor. That part is going to be linked in the description below. That part number is for Motorcraft is BU5Z-9F972-B. We are going to be using the cowl and wiper removal to get more access to this pressure sensor. You don't have to do that, but to avoid a lot of funny business of blindly reaching around the back of the engine, I am going to recommend it. To remove the cowl and the wipers, you're going to need a T25 Torx bit, a 15 millimeter socket, an optional puller tool, a small flathead driver, an eight millimeter socket. To actually remove the sensor itself, you're going to need a 13 millimeter open box wrench to hold the flats to not torque the fuel line, and then a 15 16 deep well socket. This is a 12 point, obviously a six point is going to be best. I only had a 12 point. You always want six point uh, for more surface area and contact. Now here you're going to see a lot of extensions on the left for a socket driver for that 15 16 deep wall socket. That was just so that I could get one hand out of the engine bay to keep the other hand in there to hold the 13 millimeter wrench. You could probably do it without these extensions, but this video is going to show it with them. Let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I have the cowl removed. The inner tape on the windshield was just where I marked the lines of the wipers for putting them back on. I've also waited at least 12 hours for the system pressure to lessen so that when I crack this sensor out of the fuel line, I don't get sprayed with a ton of fuel. I'm going to look behind the engine bay onto the fuel line and right down here is that fuel pressure sensor. Disconnecting it won't be hard but the trick is going to be breaking it free without damaging the delicate fuel line. All right, so when you disconnect this line, um, there's a clasp on the underside, at least for my sensor, of the way it's oriented. And it's kind of hard to get to the, the tab that you push down to release it because it had been wrapped in electrical tape. It's plugged in there, just push on the bottom end and pull out. And now we get to try and remove our sensor. After doing a little bit more research, I found that there are two flats on the sensor mount where it tees into the fuel line, and those flats fit a 13 millimeter open box wrench. All right, so it's a little grainy because I've zoomed in, but I have my 13 millimeter wrench on those flats. I'm gonna go in with my 15 16 socket, and you're probably not gonna see a whole lot because you're gonna see the back of my head in front of this camera, but I'm gonna be applying some torque to break this thing free. So here's our fuel pressure sensor, and I want to show you what it took to get that thing off. I'll tell you why. Um, initially, I started out with a very short triple reduction uh, from this half inch size of this 15 16 socket um, for half inch to a three eighths to a quarter inch into a really small ratchet just so I could get my hand in there by the fuel line. But to have two hands in there to be holding the 13 millimeter wrench on those two flats it's just really hard and you can't see what you're doing. Um, luckily, I found that you can take massive extensions and have the drive line for the 15 16 socket come right out in between your air intake and the underside of the windshield there. And it's still a little bit of torque that you have to do, but as long as you hold that 13 millimeter wrench on those flats, um, you get a lot more leverage above 
and in this open space here. So that worked for me. I would recommend that even though it looks ridiculous. You just have to be prepared to control it when it breaks free because it's a lot of momentum. All right, well, I'm getting ready to put in this new low pressure fuel sensor now. Again, you see this purple O-ring that's on here. That is going to seat inside that receptacle in the T there. You can see that inner ring. I'm not going to crank this down super hard, probably just a little bit more than hand tight um, using a smaller ratchet. I don't have a torque spec for this. So if anyone out there has one, please post it below and I'll add it and we'll update the video. Now we're gonna start it up and see if we see anything leaking out of there or anything abnormal. All right, so here's just a check with the engine running. There are no leaks, so we're good. I'm gonna turn the engine off. All right, everyone, well, that about wraps it up tonight for replacing this low pressure fuel sensor on 2013 and up Ford Escape. This is a 1.6 liter. This fix applies also for two liter engines. And again, this is to fix check engine light code P0087, low pressure on the fuel rail. So I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Please share it. I know a lot of people have this issue with their car. Um, there's also a lot of good information out there on the net. So check this out. Uh, Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and let us know if there's something that we missed here or that you'd like to see in a future video. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching How to Escape.